Hello. Hi, is this Dawn? Hey, there you are, yes. Hi, all right. Well, let me do the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very excited to welcome our featured guest for this evening. She is an actress and someone who you will fondly remember as Dodie Douglas from My Three Sons. We're very excited to welcome the one and only Dawn Lynn to the show. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome, Dawn. How are you? Thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. Well, I want to find out. You are in a safe place now, right? I, I think I'm in a place with a better signal, yes. Well, I don't want you to be on the street and, and get mugged or something. No, that would... no. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I don't, I don't, I'm not out on the street looking like a street walker. No, I'm okay. good. <laughs> you, you can never look like a street walker. You're, you're a very lovely lady, and you were a very uh, lovely child as well. <laughs> You're very sweet. <laughs> All right, so I think so far so good. So I think we'll just go ahead and continue. If we do have a, a problem later, then we can reschedule. But I think it might hold out this time. So just don't don't move. <laughs> yes, I'll stay right where I am. Okay. Uh, so I was uh, the first question we were talking about is you know having been a part of my three sons and had such a iconic character how much do you get recognized w or associated with or even referred to as Dodie because of course she played Dodie Douglas um, I I have met people that once they meet me and they find out that I was Dodie that's all they call me <laughs> they, don't call, they don't call me by my real name anymore it's I'm Dodie, that's it. <laughs> and um, every once in a while, once in a blue moon, somebody will just look at me, they pick it right away, which surprises me. Anyway, um, I get them. Is okay, Don. Don, I don't know. I don't know if you can hear me, but it's cutting out really bad again. We can only hear like every third word. Oh shoot! Yeah. Okay, so. So okay. let's. We, we definitely want to reschedule this because I'm, I'm a big fan, and it would, it would be Terry's, very bad. Terry is one of those people that, for the past week, has been walking around the house going, "Doty." I, I told everybody. I said, <laughs> is, it, "Is it a better signal now?" It's a little bit better now. Is it? Is it better? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You want to try to? I got. I got to. I got to be careful not to yell though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can. We can anyway. try again. But so go ahead. Yeah, so every once in a while, somebody will just look at me and peg it. Mm hmm. Um, that's okay. Thank you. Um, you know, they'll just look at me and say, Dodie, they recognize me right away. Right. Um, what I get the most, though, is I look familiar, but they know it was a long time ago, and they don't figure it out right away, and they think I went to high school with them in Timbuktu. <laughs> Wow, you know it, it's incredible. I, I know you said that your your door is kind of still open to acting if an opportunity arises or whatever. But is, is it true yes. that I, I read you said that you retired at the ripe old age of fifteen? <laughs> um, <laughs> I have to say that I didn't really retire. I was like forcefully given up on. To be honest, um, I am petite. I'm not even five feet tall. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And because of that, I would go on auditions and they would tell me that, well, you're too mature to play younger because you look younger, uh -huh. but you don't look your own age to play your own age. So we just couldn't find any kind of happy medium and I just didn't get any work anymore. Wow. Oh, wow. I, I'll never forget the last interview I went on it was for, uh, and this, this also really showed me how my agent was not doing anything whatsoever to help me. Uh -huh. I had the wrong agent. Um, I go on the audition. I drove myself there. I was like 17 years old. I drove myself there. Mm. And I walk in the door, and I look around, and the, the waiting room is full of moms and their 10, 11-year-olds. And, I was like, and, and you're 17. And I was 17. Wow. I took myself to the audition. And I was like, seriously, this is what my age is doing? <laughs> this is not helping me. Wow. wow. <laughs> so I, I sat there for a moment, and I was thinking, and I was like, I just, turned, I just got up and walked out. I just got up and walked out. Well, I, I know you, you didn't have very much luck there with the agent. What about 
the money situation residual so many child stars say they have problems that they don't get paid and they don't get the residuals or their agent took their money do you have any problems like that oh yeah oh yeah it was even worse than that last audition Mm. Mm. (laughs) unfortunately um oh man i need to write a book (laughs) yeah (laughs) absolutely um, it, it, it was just a, a very unhappy situation. Yeah. At six years old, I was the main breadwinner of the household. My parents divorced when I was four. Mm-hmm. And I got three sons when I was five, almost six. And all of a sudden, I'm the breadwinner earning the steady paycheck. And my mom didn't work. And my brother, who you probably know, Garrett, mm-hmm. um, teen idol singer Mm -hmm. that's my older brother and uh so he was doing some acting both you know started acting at the same time and uh it uh took off for me at a younger age and of course it did the teen idol thing for him and mom didn't work Uh, dad wasn't on the scene he wasn't part of our lives and that was it at six years old here i am with all this responsibility responsibility on my little shoulders Wow. Well, yeah. I, I know you definitely tried uh, to help get another breadwinner in the family. I actually saw an episode of the dating game, and you were trying to get your mom a date. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, that was great. That was great. I love it. Was that fun? It, it was, actually. Um, as you Since you've seen it, you know that I was being a date for my mom. Yeah. Right. And uh, <laughs> it, was a, it was a pretty experience. So so how'd that date work out? I mean, did you wind up getting another dad or did it not work out? <laughs> <laughs> no. My mom my mom never married after my parents divorced. Oh. My dad did. Um my stepmom for long that lasted was not part of my life. Uh-huh. Um so um <laughs> on the dating game I did not pick the person that my mom wanted me to pick. <laughs> and so she I'm going on the date. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Now, I wanted to ask you because, you know, we've talked to a lot of, of actors who were child stars. Um, and, and they always say that they kind of were the ones that wanted to act, that they went to mom and dad and said they wanted to do that. Was that the case with you? I mean, you started at such a young age, Don. Yes, I, I was very young. The first thing I ever did in front of the camera, I was four, and didn't find out till uh, it was a, a movie that um, my mom and dad were in, and it was right before they got divorced. And uh, a friend of my dad's was the writer director, and. You know, they need, they needed a kid, and so they grabbed me, you know, put me in a loincloth, and put a little Indian child and Native American child, and I didn't find out until I was twelve that I played a brave instead of a squaw. Yeah, you you played a little girl. boy, right? Yeah. I thought it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that's crazy. Wow. And that was in Cry Blood Apache, right? Correct. Well, I've got to ask you, because you had mentioned your brother. We actually met your brother. He's a very nice guy. Uh, I didn't know that your brother was Leif Garrett, and, and actually Stanley Livingston told me. <laughs> like, did you know Don Lynn is Leif Garrett's brother? I, I mean, that's his sister. I was like, wow, I didn't know that. But you, you actually was, okay, I know how brothers and sisters are, okay? And you got to be in an episode of Wonder Woman where you had to play his fan. Like, you, you were his screaming, adoring fan. And I'm sure when when the director said cut, you were like, Leif, get over yourself. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was pretty a surreal experience to play my own brother's group, yes. <laughs> um, um, it was, somebody asked me once, they said, well, you know, what's it like having Leif Garrett as a brother? And I said, well, do you have siblings? Do you have a brother or a sister? What's it like for you? Right. It, it, he's not quote-unquote Leif Garrett to me. He's just my <laughs> stupid older brother Leif. <laughs> you know, so, so that's, that's what it is for me. I mean, he's just my brother. We right. work together, you know. Um, we just happen to be doing the same thing, you know. I started when I was four. He started when he was five. And 
Um, so yeah, it's just it's just my older brother. It's not late Garrett to me. Right. Uh, you know, you kind of answered the question saying he's just your brother, but seeing how the girls were all screaming over him and everything, uh, I mean, what what did you think of it? Did you think it was it was stupid because it's <laughs> your brother or? Well, no, it's not that I thought it was stupid <laughs> because you know, good looking guy, the blonde hair and all. Oh yeah. And, and uh, you know, I understood they found him attractive, and so no, it's not that I thought it was stupid. It's just because I started seeing at such a young age, and you know, at seven years old, in a movie with Gregory Peck, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, you know, one of the greats, and I've never had that mentality. The best acting I ever did was playing my brother's groupie because I've never been a group. Well, right there, you go. Well, I think it's I so should, cool. I should have gotten an Emmy for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think it's so cool that you guys got to work together in so many movies and stuff. And, and yeah, you know, it's, we did work together a lot. An episode of Canon. We did that Wonder Woman. We did the three Walking Tall movies together. Yeah. Now I've got to ask you about Walking Tall. Now, in, in it was kind, of, it was kind of weird. Now, I know what you know what I'm going to get at, okay? Because you said something to Tiffany, and inquiring minds want to go uh, and want to know in, in the same way. Uh, your father was played by two different men. Uh, the Correct. first one was Joe Don Baker, okay. And the second one was yeah. Bo Svensson. Now, Bo's been yeah. on the show, and, and Bo's... Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, and Bo's been known to be uh, a little uh, controversial at times. I mean, he's got a little bit of an attitude and a little bit of a mouth, but he is a nice guy and he's fun. You kind of said to Tiffany that, that Bo <laughs> Svensson was, well, maybe I better not say. Uh, <laughs> do, do you think maybe I could change your mind into saying? <laughs> Oh, boy, I need to write a book. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Let's put it this way. The man is six foot six. Yeah, Mm -hmm. he's huge. Yeah. Uh, He goes even bigger. (laughs) I'll put it that way. Right. Okay, have you ever seen the chapter? The final chapter, yes. 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 Okay, At at the end, the car accident where he dies. Yes. Okay, coming home from the carnival, I jump out of the car, I see the car, and, you know, just scared, and I jump out of the car, scream, Daddy! and, you know, all of that. Well, okay, first take, I, I jump out of the car, screaming, Daddy! I run down the hill, drop to my knees, and I cradle his head in my lap, doing all my emoting. The director yells, cut! Silence. Okay. Mm-hmm. I look up at the, you know, everybody, you know, standing around outside of camera range watching it, you know, all the crew and everything. I look up, and they've all got tears running down their cheeks. Aww. No, you were incredible, yeah. And, the, and then they burst into applause. I was, I was like, so shocked and so complimented and humbled. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, the director said, print that's it you know it, it, i mean it was such an impact it was great right 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 so next thing you know of course he had his trailer over on the side to the left of where the camera was and <laughs> and next thing you know he gets up tells the director to come with him and they stomp and he stomps over to his trailer, director follows him in, and I mean, Bo was having a fit. The trailer was shaking and rocking, and you could hear him yelling, and not exactly what he was saying, it wasn't what he was saying, but he was yelling, you mm-hmm. know? And next thing you know, and we're all looking over there in shock, and next thing you know, they come out of the trailer, the director says, um, I'm sorry, we had some technical difficulty, we need to do the scene over again. Mm. Oh, okay. Really? And so we do the scene again, and the director says, "Okay, this time, this time don't touch him. You know, don't don't put your head in, the, in your lap like that, and don't don't touch him. Just you know, do your emoting." Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So we did it again that way, and uh, that's what they used in the film. They didn't use the original take, which is a damn shame because it had so much more impact. He he and, didn't like uh, that you were touching him, or he thought you were showing him up, or yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. He didn't like the 
Cruz or anything, but what could he do? Wow. He's dead. He corpse. Yeah. Seeing he's dead, there's nothing he can do. So the only thing they could do to change it to have less impact and you know a, a more attention on him, I guess, was to have me not touch him. <laughs> well, he's he's the man that told me that he thought David Carradine was a pussy. So <laughs> <laughs> he he said, "Oh, I wonder he's... what David Carradine thought of that." Uh, yeah, he he told me David Carradine couldn't really fight, and and that's not what I heard. But so I I guess we can safely say that Joe Don Baker was your favorite daddy. <laughs> Uh, no. No. What happened with no, him? I'm afraid not. I, I really, I really wish that I had the strength. Well, not necessarily the strength, but I, I, I guess it would be some kind of self-preservation override. Mm -hmm. Because I really wish that I had stood up for myself and said, whoa, yeah. no. Um, no matter how young I was at the time, no, I'm sorry. Obviously, that's the take you want. Look at the impact it had. That's what they had. That's what you want for the movie. Right. I wish I'd stood up for myself like that. I really do. But I, from the time that I started acting professionally, you know, especially you know when I was getting a paycheck for it, which I didn't for Cry Blood Apache, yeah. um, uh, I was told, be he to work with. Don't make waves. Don't be the problem child. Right. Yeah. They'll keep hiring you if they know you're easy to work with. You know, that's that's what I was trained to do. So I didn't speak up for myself, but I sure wish I had. Yeah. So I did you have a hard time with Joe Don Baker or No, he was sweet. He was a good was guy. He, he yeah. was a good guy. I, I just yeah, had he a didn't feeling have, he would he didn't be. have the ego that Bo did. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm I'm sorry to hear that you had problems. Uh, it, you certainly were great. That scene uh, where you know Bo gets killed, you were you were incredible, and it was emotional and made us cry, and and it really showed what an actress you are for sure. Well, well I I appreciate that very much, and and the, I managed to get that result without touching him. <laughs> <laughs> but in oh, knowing that you had. You. And knowing you had, you know, some trouble there, I, I've got to believe, okay, that you had a better experience on My Three Sons. Oh, oh, yes. On, on Three Sons? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, the, we, uh, the, the cast members, I, you know, I consider them family. I mean, you know, uh, Ben and Barry are my brothers, and, and Tina's my big sister, and, yeah. you know, I love them all to death. And, and to begin Only, with, to have the, the mother you had on the show, Beverly Garland, who was one of the greatest oh, her, actresses? Her, her, yeah, her. yeah. She, um, when I got married, fourteen years ago now, she stood up at the wedding as my mom. Wow, Aww. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was living in Germany at the time because of my husband's job. Uh -huh. At the time that she passed away, I flew in from Germany for the memorial. Mm -hmm. I loved her. Yeah, loved her. So she really treated you like her daughter, huh? I don't know. I don't know if I'd go so far as to say that. Yeah. But we definitely had affection for each other and, and loved each other, and and we're definitely caring, you know. But um, I I don't know if I'd go so far as to say I was another daughter to her. Now I, I had but, Stanley and Barry Livingston both on, and my memory is telling me they told me the story or I read it somewhere. I, I can't mm -hmm. remember, but I heard that you kicked Fred McMurray in the shins. <laughs> That I tricked him? That you kicked him in the shins. That you got mad one day and you kicked him in the shins. Fred, Fred McMurray? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. no <laughs> that would be a bad move. Yes. <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it wasn't Fred. Oh, okay. That was that was during shootout. That was during shootout. It was Henry Hathaway. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. yeah uh, with three sons with Fred. I never saw him. Unless we had a scene together, that's it. Yeah, that, that's, that's what that's seen. what the Livingston said that he didn't show up a lot unless he had to. Well, he didn't really want to do the show. Yeah, much less for as long as it lasted. So, I mean, it's the second longest running sitcom in, in U.S. history Absolutely. after Ozzy and Harriet. Right. Well, and, the, you know, he, he he didn't he didn't want to do that. So the way they got him to do it was he only filmed half the season. Mm -hmm. You know, the other half he was, you know, off-golfing. 
Yeah. So, it, you know, all, I mean, it was just a nightmare for everybody behind the scenes because all the scripts for the whole season had to be written in advance. And we would film all the masters with him, two shots with him, close ups with him, the first half of the season, all the different episodes. And then, I mean, it was a nice annuity wardrobe and everything. The, the, the women, the adult women, were really upset about it. They couldn't change your hairstyle, mm-hmm. you know, because it had to last through the whole season right. for continuity. Right. You know, and then he'd be gone the second half of the season, and then we'd do all the two shots and close ups without him, and, you know, with, these, with the script supervisor saying his lines. Wow. So it was a nightmare that way. Yeah. But I didn't know any difference. I didn't know any difference. So I'm just bru- cruising along with it, you know. But as far and, as uh, uh, somebody to work with, I mean, that, that was difficult, I'm sure. But I, I heard he was the nicest guy. Is that right? Um, I didn't have enough interaction with him to make a decision, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Like I said, the only time I saw him was when we had a scene together, exchanging yeah. our lines. That yeah. was it. Right. Um, otherwise... He was over in a quiet, as quiet as possible corner of the soundstage, right. reading his reading a newspaper or in his dressing room or whatever, and that was it. He really kept it himself, mm. and uh, so I couldn't I couldn't make a decision on that. I didn't get to know him enough. Well, you know, we even asked a lot of questions from uh, listeners who were all you know anticipating yeah. you coming on. And the one Would you, want, you want, to, want me to finish the kicking story? Oh yeah, no, I have to go ahead. How'd that happen? Okay, Henry Hathaway was our director on uh, on uh, Shootout with Gregory mm-hmm. Peck, and I mean he was you know big name, right? And uh, and I didn't like him very much. I found him to, even though you know I was so young and everything. He was he was crude, smoked a big stinky cigar and spit and cussed all the time. Wow. And I would scold him for cussing. You know, I would scold him for cussing. He said, okay, tell you what, kid, next time you hear me cuss, you can kick me in the shin. <laughs> I heard him cuss and kicked him in the shin. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, the, you know, I only did it once, but, but, you know, the cast and crew that were around at the time were like, oh, you could, you know, this big gasp, right? Oh, yeah. my God, I can't believe she did that. You know? wow. And he just... Hey, I told her she could. <laughs> so, luckily, it didn't come down on me. <laughs> wow, that's a great story. That's hilarious. The, the person I was wanting to ask you about, like I said, uh, we've got some questions from listeners, and, and they they got to know or want to know because everybody's always going to assume that he's grumpy, and that's William Demarest who played Uncle Charlie. Now, he's been around <laughs> kids for a while. You didn't come on until the last couple of seasons, but William Demarest Right, was, it was Bill Frawley. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, Fred Murd. You know, right. Fred Murd. Right. That was the first uh, uncle. Yeah. But when you come on, it was William Demaris. And, and was he as cranky Correct. as one might think he was? No, he was not. Wow. Oh, he great. was not. That was definitely more the character. Yeah. I mean, I had fun with him. He would, you know, he would uh, shake his head and do a turkey impression for me and, and things like that. No, he was fun. He was fun. Wow. Well, you mentioned Tina Cole and, and one of the people that worked for my show, and he's also a radio broadcaster on his own on his own station. It was such a Tina Cole fan, and, and uh, he thinks she's the most beautiful creature that ever walked the face of the earth. <laughs> um, she is inside and out. I love her to death. I'm glad I met her, and I'm I'm glad we're like sisters. And and yeah, I love her deeply. Now, uh, one of our listeners had actually mentioned that they, they wanted to know if what they read online was true, so I will ask you. They said that My Three Sons, is it true that My Three Sons kind of, in a way, stole you away from another television show, right? Oh, that's actually true. Okay, that's so what's actually the story? true. What, what happened was, okay, Nanny and the Professor. Right. Okay. Prudence, Kim Richards. Right. I did the pilot. Oh. As Prudence. So what happened was, um, I did the pilot, was told the pilot didn't sell. So the producer, because when, when you do a pilot, you sign a contract saying you'll do the show if, if the pilot sold. And uh, so I got a letter from the producer saying that the pilot didn't sell, and thank you, um, you're released from your contract, and so forth. 
So three sons grab me up as Dodie. Mm-hmm. Well, next thing I know, the, the nanny and the professor pilot cells last minute, and they sued the three sons producers to get me back. Mm. But, wow. you know, we had the letter from them releasing me from the contract, so I stayed with three sons, obviously. Well, and there's Kim Richards. That's, and, and you know something? Because Kim Richards was in the show, and, and she had a hard life later on. If she wouldn't have been in that show, she might have turned out straight, but... Maybe she got all her problems because she became, you avoided that. You avoided that. But, you know, I hear this a lot. I, I've got like an episode of the Munsters. It was a different Eddie. And, and, you know, a lot of times they have different people and the pilot's different. And they, they replace them with other actors. In your version of Nanny and the Professor, uh, was it still mm-hmm. Juliet Mills? To be honest, I guess it was, to be honest, but I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Well, well it was a long time ago because uh, the original... I, I don't remember working with her, but I'm guessing it was. The, the show I remember, Juliet Mills and, and Richard Long, so I don't know if right, you Right, exactly, yeah. right. Yeah. Well, well, there you go. You know, I heard this crazy thing about you, and I don't know if it's true or not. Is it true <laughs> that uh, because your, your dad was gone and he was absent... There was somebody that escaped from prison that tried to say that he was your father and tried to kidnap you. Boy, you've done your research. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Unfortunately. That is, that, that is actually true. So what happened? Um, out of the blue one day, we get a phone call from a distant, distant, like, fourth-time-removed cousin or something like that. Yeah. And uh, warning me that she had very briefly dated this guy who had gone to prison after they stopped dating but she remembers him carrying around a photo of me in his wallet saying yeah that's my daughter when he says I'm going to go get her and you know take her out of the country and you know, saying things like that and she found out that he'd gotten out of prison and uh, yeah that he'd gotten out of prison and uh, intended to make good on his claims about me wow and so she called us she managed to track down the phone number and called us out of the blue to warn us and thank goodness she did wow you know apparently it was true and they um we got a, a beautiful german shepherd that we named thor mm-hmm. uh, the the uh, norwegian god of thunder right uh, because we're of norwegian descent and uh so we got thor beautiful german shepherd and uh the reason we got him was because of that kidnap threat Wow. My mom, you know, called the police. She called the FBI and said, what, what do I do? Wow. You know, there's this, there's this apparent threat. You know, my child, what do I do? And they said, no, no crime has been committed. Well, no, not yet. Yeah, right. that, that, um, yeah that, thanks. That sounds like the police. You know, right. So they said, the best advice we can give you, get a dog and have it trained. Yeah. And that's what we did. Wow. Well, I'm I'm glad nothing happened. My God, I, I to think about what thank could have you. happened. Wow. And, you yeah, know, I, thank th- you. Th- there's another rumor out there too, and like I said, it's up to the people on my show here to clear it up because not all of it's true all the time. Uh, of course, you know, you had to be the breadwinner, and and you had a lot of pressure on you and everything. I had heard that you had been abused verbally and, and possibly physically. Is that right, or is that a rumor? Abused verbally, verbally and physically. Yeah, as a child. By who? It didn't say it didn't who. It didn't say. It was just, it was uh, something that we had read in an article, and I had even told Terry, I was like, I'm not sure that's true. Because you seem to me like you had a pretty happy family life. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> okay. I can't say that. Um, well, I appreciate uh, that you're honest. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not physically abused. Okay. No. Not physically uh, more in mental and emotional. Okay. Um, that kind of thing. Not verbally. Yeah. Or, I mean, not physically. No. The only thing that came even close to that was I was I was very young. It's like right at the beginning of Three Sons. And there were these two sisters that lived across the street. And they were older than I was. And so I'm, I'm you know, across the street playing with them one day. And... They said, oh, there's this, there's this guy down the street. He's really nice. You go visit him, he's got bowls of candy. On, oh, it's really oh. nice. Oh. I'm like, oh, okay. So they take me over there to this guy's apartment. Knock on the door. He opens the door. 
And next thing I know, I'm like, they like push me inside the door and run. They oh, take off. Yeah. And sure enough, you know, the guy had bolt of candy on the coffee table and everything. And, you know, he's, he's like putting his hands on me and, and telling me to go in the bedroom and take my clothes off. Oh, oh my God. God. And thank God, you know, I mean, as soon as the girls took me there, I was, you know, I was like wary. I was yeah. like uncomfortable. Yeah. When they took off like that, oh boy, it was the red light, the alarm sounding. Yeah. And so, thank goodness, he was not standing between me and the door because I just took off and ran home. And so my mom was giving me a bath that night. And just, you know, normal things, he's, you know, washcloth down my back kind of yeah. thing. And, and I'm like squirming, I'm uncomfortable. And I wasn't normally like that. And she's like, what, what, what's going on? Why, why are you? Well, that's what the man did. And she's like, oh, she tried to stay as possible to get as much information out of me as possible. Yeah. And she called the police. And next thing you know, uh, we're over at the guys, I guided them. I walked them over to the front door of this guy's apartment and they checked the address and sure enough, he's a registered offender. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm really sorry, well, that, God. That was a close call. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of things seem to happen to child stars, but not just child stars. It happens to a lot of people that it's really... It's a, just not heard about. Uh, well, that's absolutely true. Yeah. And, and the sad part is they don't get away. Unfortunately, yeah. they often they don't get away. Right. I saw this like really cute photo of you, uh, which my daughter, who's the other host here, got a chance to take a picture with a tiger, but I saw you with a lion. because Was that from Born Free? Oh, that was such an amazing experience. Yeah, I bet. Actually, going to Africa and filming. Okay, the book, Born Free, by um, Joy Adamson. Right. Married to George Adamson, they, you know, find the lion cub, Elsa, and brings her and so forth. Well, they did a movie based on the book, and right. then they did a series based on the book. And I got to go to Africa, total of three months. Wow. And it was amazing. I, I have the most wonderful photo session of me and two lion cubs. I, I, I cherish it. I mean, how many people have that experience, right? Right. right. I feel so blessed for things like that. Well, your your character was named Reagan, and I understand there was a time you almost were another Reagan. Were you auditioning for The Exorcist? Dang, you have done your <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, I went on the audition and was deemed too young for the subject matter. Because uh, Linda Blair, who ended up doing the role, was yeah. like four or five years older than me. Yeah, I definitely. Think. Something like that. Anyway... So yeah, it was at the time I was deemed too young for the subject matter. I wasn't crying over that one. I didn't mind missing that one. Um, but actually, the, the audition itself was pretty dang funny. There were a whole bunch of girls there, like 15, mm -hmm. 15 of us. Mm -hmm. And Mary Madonna, who was Aaron on the Walton, oh yeah, yeah, was one of them. Her and I talked about this, you know, many years later. She was one of the 15 that was there at the same time as me. And we're sitting around in a circle. And there was this hypnotist who was supposed to hypnotize, hypnotize all of us. And he put a dollar bill down on the floor. And he supposedly hypnotized us to, to think that the dollar bill was so heavy we couldn't pick it up, mm -hmm. right? None of us were hypnotized. And so I forget exactly who it was, but... You know, one of the girls walked over and just picked up the bill and put it in her pocket and sat back down. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, it was like, you know, it was so ridiculous because none of us were hypnotized. Wow. And that, that certainly wouldn't have fit the image of Dodie to be uh, saying some of the things that Linda Blair said in that movie for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did wind up doing a horror film, though, The Devil Times Five. What Was that fun? Yeah, because... that, was, that was pretty surreal also because yeah. I killed my real mom. Oh, your mom was in that. That that is my real mom, the one I put the piranhas in the bathtub with her. That, that's my real mom. <laughs> yeah. I have I haven't seen the film yet. Now I've got to see it for sure. Wow, that had to be fun. <laughs> so how was that done? Like like I'm, you couldn't have used real piranha, did you? 
I'm sorry, what was that? I said, how was that scene done? Were you actually using real piranha? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They were real piranha. Holy cow. They were dead. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> but still, of course, you know, those those teeth are razor sharp. Oh, right. yeah. Seriously. I mean, if a cow were in the water with live ones, they strip that cow to bone in minutes. I mean, this is serious stuff, even though the thing is dead. Yeah. So they put my mom in the bubble bath. <clears throat> And underneath the water, hidden by the bubbles, was like this, this box that they put over her to protect her from the from the teeth. Well, you know, as she's you know struggling, pretending to be attacked and eaten, even though they were dead, they weren't really attacking. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the you know like rolled down in the water, and the tooth nicked her leg. Well, she was not very happy about that. <laughs> right, you know. Yeah. Took her to the hospital because she was kind of like emotionally, you know, upset. So, wow. So we rushed her to the hospital on that one. Well, I could definitely see where you got your looks from. I saw your mom in a dating game episode. And wow, lovely lady. Oh, yeah. I yeah, would. Yeah, so she's, she's definitely an attractive woman. Uh, well, let me ask you, Don. I mean, you did kind of, kind of every show imaginable back then. You did a lot of stuff on, you know, you did Canon, you you did Mannix, Gunsmoke, and then you were also on a lot of, uh, you know, shows that were kind of like more variety type shows. I mean, you did the Fess Parker show, you did the Tony Randall show. Of those, if you had to pick one, do you have a favorite experience or a favorite actor that you worked with? I have a few. I have a few. Eddie Albert. Oh, okay, you know, for great. Green Acres. Oh, yeah, I love him. Love yeah. Him. Yeah. Um, I did a series pilot with him. It didn't sell, unfortunately, called uh-huh. Daddy's Girl. Um, found out after the fact that the the script, the, the show was written with me in mind. Mm-hmm. And, uh, which, of course, is very flattering. Right. Um, he was just absolutely wonderful on the set. You know, total sweetheart. Loved him. Um, Marcus Welby, yeah, Robert Young, another yeah, another classic. Yeah, actor. he was he was another absolute sweetheart. Well, here's another funny story. Um, I used to do an episode every year. They they find an episode for me and call me back every year. Well, unfortunately, I I, I think I did a total of three or four episodes, and there's a break. I think I did three in a row, and there's a break, and then I did another episode the following season. Right. right. That was because I had broken my wrist in real life. So I couldn't do the episode they wanted me to do. But anyway, so every time I'd be on the set, I'd run on the set and I'd, I'd see Robert Young and I'd run up to him and give him a big hug. And he'd, he'd you know, swoop me up in his arms and we'd hug <laughs> each other. Uh-huh. And uh, it, you know, it was like having another grandpa. He was right. just wonderful. Wow. And <laughs> I remember he... Uh, I, we were just, you know, in between scenes or, you know, on lunch break or something. We were passing by each other. And he just gave me a little boop, boop, pat on the tush. Right. <laughs> so I gave him a little boop, boop, pat on the tush back. <laughs> and apparently it was a, oh, you know, kind of thing again. Like, I can't believe you did that. Oh, and he's my. like, oh, no, no, she's my granddaughter. That's like, right. Okay. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, of, of all the cast of My Three Sons, i got to know about the, the Livingston boys now, Chip and Ernie, Barry and Stanley yeah. Livingston. Okay, have you got any stories with them? Because they're 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 pretty funny guys. I, I love both of them. Like, they're my real brothers. Yeah. Um, Barry is a little quieter. Yes, he, he is. Yes, he is. Yes. Than, than Stan. But Stan's funny. Um... <laughs> um he he was the character, you know. He would. I remember him. He was always chewing gum. Oh, he was always chewing gum, and he had a nervous habit of, after he was done chewing the piece of gum, he would take it out of his mouth and he would play with it with his fingers and turn it into a square, <laughs> this little square of gum. You would find them all over the set, <laughs> you know, behind the scenes. You know, stuck to the back of the fake wall and things like that. And even in in oh, it was just crazy finding that gum everywhere. That's what I remember about Stan. <laughs> he, he was lucky in the fact he got the most beautiful TV wife, Ronnie Troop. Because oh yeah, she, oh, she was a sweetie. Yeah, she was on some old kids show called Danger Island. It was on like the Banana Splits or something, and. and uh, 
run Gorgeous. through the jam like a wizard, right? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes. There you, you know your old TV. Wow. And you, I, I read that you, you know a lot of uh, other kids' stars. Uh, you were on an episode of the Howard Stern with Aaron Murphy, who's been on the show. And I guess they, Howard, like, kind of coached you guys into talking about politics. That was a out of the blue surprise. Dang, you've done your research. <laughs> How do you know these things? <laughs> anyway, it was the second time I'd been interviewed by Howard Stern. Yeah. Okay. I had never been to the East Coast before, and. I was talking to my brother one day, and I said, yeah, you know, I'm going to do this radio, you know, this over-the-phone interview like we're doing now um, with this, you know, this Lord Stern on the East Coast. And I'd never heard of him before. I'd never heard of him before. I forget what year it was, but I'd never heard of the guy. Mm-hmm. And so, apparently he was still in just the tri-state area, but he was the biggest thing there. Right. And... And so I tell my brother, yeah, I'm going to do this interview with Howard Stern. And she's like, Howard Stern? You know how big he is? You know, and I'd never heard of the guy. <laughs> so anyway, so I, I, I do the interview, and I, I didn't know what to expect or anything. And he took his, his character, he was out of the closet, Stern. Mm-hmm. You know, this A character. Right. He's doing that, and I'm like, okay, what's the stick here, you know? <laughs> and... Uh, so that was my first experience with him. And then uh, when Three Sons went to Nickelodeon and they put it in their Nick at Night lineup, right, right. They, they brought me and and uh, Aaron out there to appear at this big party that they called Suburba Fest, the launch of Nick at Night. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so... So I uh, so called up Gary Delabati, who was uh, the producer, if he still is, I'm not sure, the producer of the show, and I said, hey, yeah, I happen to be out, you know, coming out for this thing, you know, you know, do you want, do you want me to, you know, do an interview? And, oh yeah, that'd be great, that'd be great. And I said, you know, Aaron Murphy, Tabitha is going to be with me. You know, we'd ask her if she wants to participate. Oh sure, that'd be wonderful, for both of you. And so we arranged it. We're there in the studio. And uh, Howard Stern was very, very different off the air than on air. You know how you you turn on persona. Right. You're on. Yeah. And go into your character. Well, that's what he did. Uh-huh. And off the air, he was very polite. I'm Howard. Nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. And uh, But on the air, it was like, you never knew what to expect. Right. And that was part of his appeal. I was, so, I was trying to figure out, wrap my head around why he was trying to get you two to talk politics. Was he trying to say that people from old TV, like child stars, didn't have an inquiring mind, didn't have enough intelligence to talk about? I don't know. What was his deal there? What was his angle? Yeah. Well, I, I, I certainly didn't expect it either. It yeah. was totally out of blue for me and for Aaron. You know, But like I said, part of his appeal was you never knew what to expect. Exactly. You never knew what he was going to throw at you. And I think that's part of what the audience likes about him, yeah. the surprise factor. Yeah. So anyway, so we're sitting there, you know, talking about stuff, and, and it was the time of Saddam Hussein. So, and uh, so all of a sudden, out of blue, he asks us, or, or earlier in the conversation, he said, so, Aaron, um, you've alluded to having a, you know, a genius IQ, and, uh, you know, what's the number? What's the actual number of your, your IQ? Right. Well, she wouldn't say. She just demurred, and she wouldn't say. And so he just, I remember the look on his face. He was like, yeah, right. You know? Right. <laughs> and so, so then, you know, a little while later, he brings up this, this, you know, Saddam Hussein thing. And, you know, what do you think we should do about this situation? And, well, Aaron the total Miss America contestant answer, mm-hmm. oh, I don't want innocent people to be hurt, you know, uh-huh. was all she said, you know, <laughs> and, and I, so I, and he, again, just like rolled his eyes, and I knew I wasn't going to get away with that, right. <laughs> you know, giving that kind of answer, right? <laughs> and so, so then he turns to me and says, well, what do you think, Don? And I said, well, I absolutely agree with uh, with Aaron that innocent she- people should not be hurt but you have to take into consideration 
had quite could stop Eastern since we bombed Libya. Yeah. And there was silence for a minute. And he's just, yeah, right, right. And he turns to Aaron. I feel so bad. He turns to Aaron and says, and you're the one with the genius IQ? Oh, oh my. Like, oh, yeah. No. See, that was his angle. He's trying to, to show people that he thought you we were stupid and he found out you weren't. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he also wants, you know, surprise answers, too. Right. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, wow. yeah. That's, so, yeah. I got to ask you how how's your brother doing? Because, like I said, he's a very nice guy, and, and it had to be rough for the family because I, I know that he got in an accident with a friend, and his friend wound up dead. And I guess like they sued your brother, which was very sad. Well, paralyzed. Paralyzed. Yeah. And, and uh, how was that whole thing? Right, for you guys? right. Uh, Roland did not die in the accident. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, very sad. Very sad. You know, it's 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 it was you know, both taking in foolish behavior. It was both of them. Right. Yeah. You know, um, it could have just easily been Roland driving and my brother who was the one who was paralyzed. Yeah. So it's just a really, really sad, tragic situation. Yeah. Um, he's doing good now. Um, he, he, for a while, was our dad's caretaker. You know, my husband's job took us away to Germany. Yeah. So I wasn't able to be there. And... So he was taking care of Dad, who passed away a year ago, August. Mm, sorry. And now he's our mom's caretaker. Oh, okay. So it's it's a difficult situation for him, you know. Not easy, and I sympathize with that. Yeah. Right. You know, I know what our parents were like, what Dad was like, and I know what Mom is like. So, uh, so I sympathize. And unfortunately, yeah. at the moment, because of just recently me getting back from Germany, I'm not in a situation where I can take mom in yeah. at the moment. So, yeah, I uh, I definitely sympathize. Where you you and Leaf was pretty close. We used to be very close, and now we're working our way back. There you go. Um, You'll get there. We used to be very close. If I don't get too emotional, I'll tell you a story about how my brother is. Sure. And this is this is what I call my true brother. Okay? We're close in age. And so uh, you, he and I are only like a year and a half and two and a half. We're only, we're only 14 months apart. Right. And so, you know, we're little ones. And uh, my parents um, had some friends over. And their friends brought their daughter, who was uh, no more than six months older than Lake. So, all three very close in age. And we had this, like, scaled-down, you know, child-sized chair. And my brother was sitting in it, and this little girl decided that she wanted to sit in it. So she walks over there, and she pushes my brother out of the chair. And the mom, and she sits down at it, of course, and the mom's... They're not being neglectful. They're there in the room. But they decided to, you know, stand back and watch and see how they would for themselves first. Right. You know, and if it, if it escalated, they would, of course, intervene. But um, so my brother just got up and walked away. Mm. Let her have a chair. Okay, fine. The moms just look at each other and shrug. Okay. So she gets, this girl gets distracted. And my brother just down in the chair again. Well, of course, now. Back again. Goes and pushes my brother to the chair a second time. He just gets up and walks away again. Okay? Mm-hmm. Distracted and leaves the chair again. This time I went and sat down in the chair. And of course, now she wants the chair back. And pushes the chair. That's when my brother walked over, pushed her out of the chair. And he didn't sit down in the chair. He picked me up and put me back in the chair. There you go. <clears throat> That's my brother. And to do something like that at two and a half years old, right. you don't have your true heart. Yeah. That is the person. And my brother was always very protective. And, you know, if the kid was picking on me in the playground, I could say, my brother's going to get you at recess, you know. Yeah. And, and he was physical with them. You know, he didn't hit them or push him or anything like that. But he was... 
to say, you leave my sister alone. Right. And they knew he meant it. And I always had wonderful. And uh, then came the drugs. Right. Well, you keep on working your way back to him, Dawn, because I'm telling you straight out, okay, you guys need each other. I mean, Dad's gone, and, and, and Mom's up in age now, and you guys yeah. are our family, you know, and, and your blood, and there's nothing thicker than blood. Yeah, it, it definitely feels good that we're headed in the right direction again, and and uh, we were estranged a while before because of the drugs, and, and I didn't go down that road at all, and, and uh, you know, when you're in that environment, and, you know, wrapped up in all of that he didn't want goody two shoes a little sister around who wasn't doing it <laughs> yeah. right. kind of thing you know so yeah <laughs> but we're working our way back and it's good, good. so I, I take it your husband's not in showbiz right <coughs> excuse me he's, he's what I take it your husband is not in showbiz no no he's not no uh, his parents wanted him to be <laughs> he's uh he's one of six boys mm-hmm actually and when John and I got together I got along great with his parents and of course they knew who I was you know growing, you know, going up in front of the camera and all that and uh, John says that his, his oldest brother the oldest of the six mm-hmm. was by the mom's first marriage so his parents had five boys and he says that you're the daughter my parents wanted and had five sons trying for. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to let everybody know like like how to get a hold of you because I, I know you had told us that you just recently got back from Germany and you said right. that you were you were looking towards trying to get into voice acting and things like that. We have a lot of producers, directors, and people in the industry listening to this show and, and in case they'd be interested in having you do some work for them, how did they find you? Uh. We're definitely going to work that out because I would love that. Yeah, I would. I would love to do voiceover work. Um, from what I hear from other fellow XCAs, ex-child actors, right. mm-hmm. who do some voiceover work, very competitive. Yeah, yeah, very competitive, and so it's hard to break into. But I, I would love to. And it's awesome. Um, you can work in your pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> I probably shouldn't tell you that, but I'm sitting in my PJs right now. Well, there you go. There you go. There you go. Well, you know, I'm I'm sorry that Pink, you... fluffy slippers and everything. Hey, yeah. why not, right? Yeah. It's all about comfort. Well, you, you're a survivor, and, and you had, you know, a little misfortune here and there in your life, but you turned out pretty damn good, and, and I always Thank think you. it's great, because everybody always thinks, oh, these child stars, and it's all bad all the time. It isn't all bad. And, and like, for instance, I know you know him. We had... Uh, Johnny Whitaker on and I'm so proud of him how he's turned out because he had trouble too and he had a drug Thank problem you. but he's now working as a drug counselor and he's done so much with his life and and I'm very proud of him for doing that oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah I'm I'm uh, for one thing I, I want to mention real quick and sure. then I'll, I'll continue but I want to uh, the other thing where my heart is what I want to do mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want, because like I said earlier, I'm not even five feet tall, and I would love to find some company to work with to design a line of clothing for true petite, because I'm telling you, it's hard to find clothes out there. Right. You owned a boutique for a while, right? A, a boutique? There's that research again. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on uh, Piercing Island in San Francisco where my mom was born and raised, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, it, it uh, that didn't give up on us. We gave up on it. Right. Um, it probably shouldn't have, but you never know. It's, it's one of those twists and turns in life that you never know what is the result is going to be and, uh, you know, until... You make the decision in hindsight, twenty twenty, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So well, we hope it's uh, we hope it's been to, an amazing life, a wild ride. We hope to see a a line of clothing uh, from you, and and we hope that you get into the voice acting and the, and the radio type of stuff. 
I think it would be great for you. And uh, keep in touch Thank with you. us because, you know, anything we can do to help along with that or, or to get your information out there, if you end up getting a website or whatever, just uh, let me know and we'll make sure to, to promote the crap out of it. Well, we know you used to be on, on Facebook and, and now you're not. You need to get back on Facebook. Well, what will happen with that is um, originally I was on Facebook as Dawn Lynn. Yeah. Right. Well, I got hacked. Oh, uh, okay. I got hacked. Within like five minutes, my Facebook page and my email were hacked. And there was a, uh, a money scam sent out from my email posing as me. You know, saying my husband and I are visiting England, and you know we were <laughs> mugged, and and we don't have our credit cards anymore. We have to pay the hotel bill, and they won't let us leave because of it. our passports were stolen. This whole sob story, right? Right. Totally untrue. And luckily, only one person actually, well, two people uh, sent. One person sent money, and one person was about to, but somehow the transaction didn't go through online, oh so gosh. saved him. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's really bad. So what I did was I did a new Facebook page, but not as Dawn Lynn. So I'm, I'm hesitant to reveal that to the world, but, um, <laughs> well, maybe just, anyway. maybe just come up with a website then to where, you know, people can contact you for, for work opportunities. Well, actually I do, I do have a, a, another Facebook page. I'm not very active on it, to be honest, because, mm -hmm. you know, right now, uh, my life is, is so, quote, unquote, normal and boring. Right. You know, <laughs> and people want to hear about all your adventures, going to movie premieres and things like that. Well, oh, yeah, I went grocery shopping. I went and got gas in the car today, <laughs> you know, just like you did. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, how so about this? If somebody <laughs> wants... <laughs> so that's why I don't post anything, but on Facebook, it's Dodie Douglas. Well, if somebody wants... So try that. Somebody wants Don Lynn, okay, to appear at a celebrity autograph convention or, or things like that. They can get a hold of you on LinkedIn, right? Yes, yes, I am on LinkedIn also, yes, right. yes. Well, Don, I want to thank you so much for, for uh, spending some time with us and chatting with us and for sticking out the, the technical difficulties. We, we got it to work. We made it through it. I'm, I'm glad. I thank you for inviting me. And, and tell your brother to look for a message because we're trying to get a hold of him and trying to get him on. I did meet him, but I never got him on the show, and I'd like to have him on too. Okay, I will mention it. All right. Thank you so much, Don. Uh, stay safe and have a great rest of your weekend. You too. Thank you very much, both of you. Absolutely. Okay. Keep right. in touch. We yes. will. We will. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. bye.